Today I'm going to be sharing with you a complete guide on how to lose belly fat. Losing belly fat can be a challenging task, but with the right approach, it definitely is achievable. Remember, losing belly fat is not an overnight process. It takes time, dedication, and consistency. With the right approach and some hard work, you can achieve that goals of achieving that flatter stomach. All right, first thing you need to know, there's no one size fits all to really lose that belly, but I'm gonna give you some formulas you could use and also teach you the approach of exactly how you could actually do it to lose this belly fat. Let's get started. All right, so this is the formula we're gonna to use to find your BMR, so that's your basal metabolic rate. Basically, the amount of calories your body burns at rest doing absolutely nothing. Now, keep in mind, it's gonna be slightly different for each and every person, so we're gonna need three stats over here. Your body weight, your height, and also your age. So let's go over this example uh, using this formula, 66 plus 6.3 times body weight, plus 12.9, and it's supposed to be an X. Multiply that by the height in inches. Minus 6.8 times your age in years. So let's go enter in my stats over here. So right now I am 194 pounds. And then I am 68 inches. Yes, I'm a short king. Then we're gonna minus it by the last factor, which is the age, right? So 6.8 times your age. So I am personally 23 years old right now. And it's gonna give me my BMR. So let's go run these numbers. Um, I'm just gonna snap my finger. There you go. So I have these numbers all added up. Now all I have to do is grab this number, these two, because it's subtracting this one. Uh, so you can use this number, subtract that one, and we're gonna go find that out. And there we go. It's 2009. No, not the year, but that's my BMR. But we're not actually done yet because everybody's lifestyle is a little bit different, right? I personally sit at my desk for most of my day uh, besides when I'm working out, because I'm pretty much an online fitness coach. So I'm getting back to my clients, writing content, filming, editing, and that such. You might be in the same position where your office worker sitting down. So we're going to multiply it by a factor. And there's going to be some factors over here. I'm going to go list them out. All right, now we have the factors shown on the left. So what you're going to do is identify which one are you. Are you sedentary like me? I'm pretty sedentary right now because I pretty much, for work side of things, I'm on my desk. But I do work out quite a bit. So I can almost classify myself as like a light active, moderate active, because I pretty much work out every single day. I'm gonna class myself, classify myself, can't even talk, as a moderately active, because I do work out every single day. When it's cardio, weight training, I personally work out five days a week. I'm on off days too as well, I do do cardio. So I'm gonna say I am moderately active. If you're very active, you could classify that as your job. Like maybe you work construction, iron worker, something like that's where you're always on your feet in that sense. And moderately active, I'm gonna say, is pretty much, well, I'm gonna say a lot of it is gonna be a lot of your lifestyle too as well, and what you do kind of for work, because that's pretty much what most people do, is for like eight hours a day, is their work side of things. So if you're always on your feet, maybe like your chef, your cook side of things, you can put down like the light active, in that sense, if you are working out, like, you know, pretty much like five days a week, and your cook always on your feet, moving around in that sense, I would classify you as like moderately active too as well. So these ones kind of vary in that sense, if your goal is really to lose weight, I would always classify yourself as one down and you'll find out after. So use that weight you found out from the formula, so mine's 2009, and I'm gonna multiply that by what I said is morally active, because that's me, 2009, times that factor of 1.55. That's what I identify as, I don't wanna identify as a triangle or a square. And we're gonna do some more math, and I am apparently not that Asian, because I can't do them ahead. So I'm gonna use a calculator. That's 3,103.95. And that's gonna be the calories basically my body needs to maintain my body weight. And pretty much that is a little bit kind of shooting overboard actually for me personally at the moment. It was this before, I was actually even higher in the past itself uh, when I was working more jobs, but since I kind of switched roles, in that sense, it is a little bit higher. So if I actually want to find the calories I need to lose weight now, I'm going to multiply or subtract that, I mean, by 500. So that's going to give me 2613. So that's the calories I need to eat to lose weight, which is pretty accurate, actually. If I eat these amount of calories, I'm gonna lose pretty much one pound per week. That's actually pretty much me right now. I'm actually eating 2775, and I'm pretty much just maintaining my calories in that kind of sense and my weight, uh, just because I went through a big cutting phase and I dropped it even lower than this, and then now I'm actually reverse dieting because I'm prepping for a show in July. So I'm actually trying to, quote unquote, uh, gain some weight in almost that sense. So I'm actually reverse dieting and I'm pretty much staying the same weight regardless, I'm doing 
75 calories. And yeah, but you guys can use this formula, find the amount of calories. Now this number might seem a little high and be a little bit higher for some of you because your, your metabolism might be a little more damaged in that sense where if you eat this amount of calories, you actually gain weight just given your body stats and the fact you do choose. So one, I do recommend you choosing pretty much one kind of above in terms of like lifestyle when you are doing that factor. But two, you're gonna have to most importantly actually play around with these numbers. When we play around with them is like try this amount of calories for a week, right? And now in the week time, did you gain weight? If you did gain weight and your goal is to lose weight, lower that number. Let's just say you actually gain like the pound in the week, right? So you could subtract this by another 500. So that'd be like 1913. You could try that if you pretty much like gained one pound in that one week that you tried this amount of calories and you would track that in the MyFitnessPal. But now if you lost like a lot of weight itself, like let's just say, I don't know, you lost like the five pounds, which can be sort of normal when you first start like a weight loss thing because a lot of it could be water, but that might be a little bit aggressive and it keeps continuing onwards. They can actually like add a little bit more calories to that because generally you don't wanna lose too, too much weight at first either because you're gonna have a higher chance of losing some muscle tissue, right? So in that case, let's just say you lost the five pounds, maybe the next week too as well, you lost like another like four or something like that. I would actually bump up those calories slightly itself, but like another 250. So with that, another 250, it would be like 20, 863, right? So you eat that many calories if you lost too much. And my handwriting is not very great, as you can tell. But yeah, so hopefully that makes sense over there. Well, how does this all relate to losing the belly? Like I mentioned, I'm gonna explain this. So let's go erase all this. So your belly. All right, so now we got a clean, fresh board. Your belly may look like this, but you do have some muscles underneath, right? So this is your ab muscle, looks like a B over here, but this belly fat is lost by a calorie deficit. So eating those calories, like I mentioned in the last clip, but that calorie deficit could also be created through pretty much what we call exercise. But the problem is most people think they just have to like run for hours, just lose that belly fat. But let me give you a little reference. So this Big Mac, I know it's a very beautiful Big Mac, is 550 calories. I, I just searched it up by the way. Uh, so that's about one hour and 20 minutes on the treadmill at a moderate walking pace, like incline 10, and maybe like 2.2 .2 miles per hour. So that's roughly the equivalent of that one. Now, I don't really like equating these two to kind of together but I just wanna give you a reference of like how easy it is to pretty much just put down those calories, inhale them, what I call them, cause I, you know, eat very fast, I enjoy my food, and also how long it would take to actually burn that off from like a minute to minute perspective. So what you guys can do though, is let's just say your calories themselves, your BMR, that was including pretty much with the activity level, to actually to lose that weight itself, and you found the calories you need to lose weight. So let's just say with the last example, let's make it really easy too as well. You found the calories like your BMR and you multiply it by that life factor like you found previously, found previously, that was like 2,700. Let's make it really easy itself. Actually, screw it, let's go 2,500, make it even easier. If you wanna have that 500 calorie deficit, I'm gonna explain why we need a 500 calorie deficit if you wanna lose one pound of fat per week, is because one pound of fat is 3,500 calories, right? One of these fat blobs, I'm gonna call them a fat. That's 3,500 3, calories. So if we wanna divide this by seven, cause there's seven days in a week, that comes out to 500, right? So that's a deficit of 500 calories per day itself. So if we found the numbers in the previous clip, they calculated, obviously cause you calculated it, and we got 2,500, and we wanna create a deficit, which is now gonna be 2,000. You guys can eat, let's just say 2,250 calories and now do 250 calories worth of cardio. Because this right here, that's gonna create a deficit, right? This is 250 of a deficit, and now this is 250 of a deficit too as well, of the calories you're burning off through the cardio side of things, and that's gonna create the 500 deficits. And if you do this pretty much for seven days a week, well guess what, you just lost one pound of fat. So hopefully that makes sense. But you could also go a little bit further. Let's say the like, Kevin, I really want to lose more fat, right? I want to lose more. So you guys can create a further calorie deficit. Let's go back to this number over here, like the 2,500. So if you want to lose like two pounds of fat in a week, right? You guys could pretty much almost um, play around with these numbers. You could do like 2,000 calories. And now you could do like, you know, 
500 calories of cardio, which might be pretty much like an hour and 20 minutes a day, right? Say 500 calories of cardio side of things. And depending on what you do, it's gonna be a little different. So you're eating 2000, you're doing 500 calories of cardio. Now you created this deficit itself of a thousand. You see where you got the thousand from? Because this right here, 2,500 minus the 2000, that's 500 of a deficit. And then we add that these two together itself, and then we get the thousand calorie deficit. So now this would probably be equate to two pounds of fat a week. Now, like I mentioned earlier, this might be a little bit different for everybody because your lifestyle is gonna be a little bit different and the factors over there because some people are metabolic damaged or may have some hormonal issues or even their neat levels are a little bit lower. So that's not an exercise activity thermogenesis and that does play a big part in how many calories you do burn. So that's things like fidgeting, the amount of steps you do per day and so on. Now we all talked about so now that we talked about creating a calorie deficit and the formula, what you need to find out how many calories you need to lose weight and to lose that belly over time, because obviously it's going to be consistency. It's going to play a big part. Let's go to the gym. Most people think that doing ab exercise like this is going to magically remove that belly fat, but it will help you develop those ab muscles underneath. But you have to really lose that belly fat over the ab muscles to really see them. I do recommend doing these exercises to really grow them out though. Ah, yes, there is the goat. So. Most importantly too as well, we need to have enough protein in your diet. And I explain why that's important for you to really lose that belly fat too as well. Whether you get your protein from supplements like I got from my sponsor over here, you use code WooFitness for 20% off. Head up to Legion, links in the caption by the way. Or from Whole Foods itself like your chicken breast. This is essential for your body to build and repair those muscles. Also it's gonna help increase your metabolism too as well because protein, it takes the most amount of calories to digest protein out of your proteins, carbs, and your fats. Now the reason why getting enough protein is really crucial for you to lose that belly fat is because one, if we're not really getting enough protein side of things, your body's more likely to burn your muscle tissue as fuel rather than your fat. And obviously if we're burning muscle tissue rather than your fat itself, we're not gonna really lose that belly fat as much as you want or as efficiently. So I do recommend you doing one gram per pound of body weight for your protein side of things. So if I'm like 200 pounds, you're gonna get like 200 grams of protein. Uh, protein. That's how you say it. But if you're also like over 20% body fat, because I'm gonna put like a little chart kind over here, you need less protein or you don't have to eat as much. I mean, there's no really cons to eating that 200 grams then, but if it's really hard for you, which I understand because I do have a lot of clients, you could get away with a little bit less. So I'd recommend one gram per pound of lean body mass. Let's do some math on that. Back to the whiteboard. All right, so for, to clarify the protein intake, let's go look at it. So easy math is one gram per pound of body weight, 200 pounds equals 200 grams. But now if you're obviously over like 20% body fat itself, might be a little bit harder, like I was mentioning kind of in the blast clip. So let's go do that math on that. So it's gonna be 1.0 grams per pound of lean body mass. So that's what LBM stands for. And lean body mass is basically anything that is not your fat. So let's go uh, explain what I mean by further that. So if you're 200 pounds right now, and you're like 20% body fat, because you looked at this chart over here, which I popped up on the screen, that means you have 40 pounds of fat. So 200 minus 40 pounds of fat gives me a lean body mass of 160. Such so a lean body mass, and you need one gram per pound of body weight. So that means 160 grams per day. That's gonna be your protein intake. All right, so now that I taught you how to find out your calories to lose weight, also like the amount of cardio you should do itself, also your protein intake, we're gonna go figure out the rest of your macronutrients. So that's gonna be your carbs and your fats to give you a complete guide because I just went over how to find the calories. So let's go to the last part. All right, so we're gonna erase all this, except this part. All right, so we're gonna leave this as how to find the proteins. You have the protein right over here. Let's just say we had the calories we found earlier to lose the weight. We're gonna go uh, eat 20 or 2000 calories itself. And now your protein intake is 200 grams. So now we need to find the carbs and also the fats. So we're gonna go with the fats first. So we're gonna take this number, 2000, and multiply it by 20 or 30%. You guys could choose either or in the rep range. We're gonna go spot in the middle. So 2000 times 25%. The reason why we choose 25% itself is because between 20 and 30, and that's generally the, the range itself with the healthy kind of fats, that's gonna help your hormone production and help you kind of feel good too as well. It's not too low, not too high, unless you're doing keto. 
that's way too low. So doing my math over here, that's gonna be 500 calories. So one gram of fat is nine calories. So we're gonna actually divide that by nine. So taking that calories from the fat, divide that by nine. This is gonna give me the amount of grams I need in fat. Let's use a calculator. All right, so it's gonna be 55.5. I'm just gonna say 56 grams. That's the amount of fats I need per day. This is the amount of protein I'm gonna get per day for the 2,000 calories. And we're gonna go find out the carbs now. So it's very easy. So we're gonna grab these two. So we're gonna actually grab the amount of calories from protein. So one gram of protein is four calories. So 200 times four is gonna be 800 calories from your protein. So what we're gonna do to find that out is we're gonna subtract this. Well, actually let's go over here, 2,000 minus 800, which is from the protein, right? And also 500 from the fat, and that's gonna give us the remaining. So that's 1,300 total. So we need 700 calories from carbs. Now to find the grams, you can divide that by four because one gram of carb is four calories. So let's do some math on this. That's gonna be 175 grams of carbs per day. It's your daily diet on 2,000 calories. Let's go back earlier from your BMR side of things. Let's just say you found it out earlier. Your BMR was like 20 to 50. So you have 250 calorie deficit just from the calorie side of things. Your goal was to lose one pound of fat per week. That's your goal. So that means we need a 500 calorie deficit per day itself. So we're gonna do calories, which is like um, cardio calories is 250. So with this plan over here, you're Diet side of things, having 2,000 calories, and your cardio side of things, you're gonna basically burn, or aim to burn 250 calories per day, which if you want a treadmill side of things, that's probably roughly like 35 kind of minutes on an incline of 10, and a speed of like two miles per hour, 2.2 miles per hour. That's roughly what it comes out to per day. So you obviously kind of adjust these, whether you want to eat more food or do more calories in your kind of preference or do some other things to help increase that uh, energy expenditure. But remember, this is all theoretical, by the way. So you have to test these numbers out um, in terms of doing the cardio, adhering to those calories. I recommend tracking my fitness pal so you know exactly how much you're doing, how much you're eating itself, and to ultimately get the most accurate numbers. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, and as always, live to inspire.